For years, Republican Congressman Ron Paul has been talking about limiting the Federal Reserve's powers or getting rid of the Fed altogether. He even wrote a book about it. Its title, End the Fed. In it, he blames the central bank for the current economic troubles and calls for auditing Fed policy. Starting next month, the Texas Republican may finally get his chance as he takes over the House subcommittee that oversees the Fed. Now, in a first on CNBC interview, the man himself, Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, nice to have you on the program. Thanks so much for your time tonight. Thank you, Maria. So you've written the book titled End the Fed. Do you still want to eliminate the Federal Reserve? Oh, sure. But I think the Fed will end itself before I'm able to do it. Um, the book uh, essentially concludes that we at least should start ending the Fed by allowing competition. I don't like the idea that they have monopoly control. It's a cartel. They get to print the money. And uh, the Constitution really doesn't give them that authority. The Constitution said that only gold and silver can be legal tender. I want to legalize competition and allow individual Americans to use gold and silver uh, in competition as money. Today, if you do that, you can go to jail. And I don't like the idea that the power gravitates to the to the Federal Reserve. They literally can have a budget yearly budget bigger than the whole Congress. And then what they do is kept secret. We don't even know where they spend the money. We're just starting to crack that uh, nut. In, in order to get some of this information, we should continue to do it. So let's, but, talk, let's talk about that. I mean, as far as do you favor a gold standard? Well, uh, that's what the Constitution says we should have, is a gold standard. I mean, my personal belief is I'd like the market to determine it. Uh, the market can pick, but the market over 6,000 years has always checked something, che uh, picked something of real value, like gold and silver. So they would be high on the agenda. But I'm not, not in, in my personal beliefs, I'm not overly rigid and say, thou shalt have this, because markets are pretty smart. But right now, the markets are getting smart because they're rejecting the idea of a fiat standard and they're starting to realize it's this fiat standard and manipulation of the money supply and interest rates by the Fed that gave us the bubbles and now has given us this financial crisis that we're in. And I don't believe that uh, we're anywhere near the end of this. I think we're about to see the collapse of the bond bubble and you're going to see skyrocketing interest rates and, and price inflation coming back. And that will be a whole new ball game for us to face. So will you use your new position to pursue that goal? I mean, in terms of overseeing the Fed, what changes will you make? as the overseer of the Fed? Well, I, I think what we need to do is start off by uh, making sure that everybody understands the business cycle and why we have unemployment and why the Re Federal Reserve is responsible for that. Then I should also pursue the transparency to find out where this money went. They released some figures a couple of weeks ago, but they left a lot of unanswered questions, and we need to ask more questions. And then we should have a real audit of the Fed. We ought to even count the gold to see if they didn't uh, loan out the gold or sell the gold when all the central banks were doing this. And then eventually, we have to talk about monetary reform. Uh, internationalists are already talking about it. You know, Zolik has even mentioned that maybe we should include gold in this discussion. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're, we're well on our way to the necessity of having a new monetary standard. I do believe that the dollar reserve standard is uh, going to come to an end. Well, I mean, let's talk about that because, you know, the, the administration, Treasury is always saying that they believe in a strong dollar, and yet the dollar uh, gets to a level and then and just falls back again. So wh what do you think is behind that? Well, you know, it always fascinated me that the Treasury is in charge of a strong dollar and the dollar policy, and yet it's the Fed that creates the money. <laughs> so uh, the Fed determines the value of the dollar. If you print a lot of dollars, the value of the dollar has to go down. And then when the world uh, financiers reject the dollar, then they won't have any control. You can talk about and trade currencies, but ultimately the markets rule out. Even when they fix the price of gold like they did for many, many decades at $35 an ounce, the market overwhelmed and the Bretton Woods system broke down and now this system is breaking down and that's why gold has broken out again uh, because there are too many dollars. Right. This whole idea of just the Federal Reserve being able to create $600 billion and throw them out there and with the expectation of lowering interest rates and what do they get? Higher interest rates. Right, right. <laughs> that's exactly what we're saying. So well, well, let me ask you this, Congressman. I mean, what do you say to those people who question whether you can actually be a fair and effective leader on a panel that oversees monetary policy when you're on the record as being opposed to the Fed and its missions? Well, I think uh, I think there's every reason to believe that there would be a fair discussion. I think that I welcome the people who disagree with me to come to it. There's nothing I would like better than to have the Austrian economist uh, debate Paul Krugman. And he's, he's the arch champion of spending and printing 
printing money, even more than Bernanke is. Mm -hmm. He complains about Bernanke not printing enough money. When, so I'd love for him to come to the committee and debate people who believe in honest money. When, when do you expect inflation? You know, we had Mike Milken on earlier today, and he said the markets are basically telling you the same thing. So when do you think inflation becomes a real problem? Well, well the big problem is, is the distortion of the definition of inflation. People want you to think only about prices for inflation. But inflation is when you increase the supply of money, and which manipulates the interest rates, which causes business people to do dumb things and debt to rise. But w the question should be, when do I expect prices to go up? I said we're in the, in the midst of it. A lot of commodity prices are going up, uh, and also gold prices are going up, uh, bond prices are going up, uh, are, are way up. They're in a bubble. So prices are, are really very high, and they're responsible. The question is, is, when is the CPI going up? But the CPI, as measured by the old method of CPI, is going up over 4% per year. So it, it's there, and it's going to get much worse. And then, of course, there's labor expenses as well. So labor that costs, when, when, when does that go up? Let me, let me get your take on, on the federal response to this economic slowdown. I mean, it just seems that the Fed repeatedly comes out and says, look, we are going to be there if the economy deteriorates further. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. How come it's all on the Fed? Uh, okay, so the federal government, we've got this tax cut extension. W what's the outlook for Final Passage, number one? Well, it looks like the, the tax pass package probably will pass, uh, but that won't uh, make the economy any better. It could make it worse. Uh, it could get the economy could get worse whether you pass it or not. It probably doesn't matter that much. But the Fed only has one tool, and that is creating more money. We got ourselves into this mess because we spent too much, borrowed too much, inflated too much, and regulated too much. And we're trying to get out of it by spending more, printing more, regulating more, and 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 you just can't do that. You can't get out of a problem by doing more of the same thing. And we have not allowed the correction to occur. You want liquidation of debt, and the debt really hasn't been liquidated. It's been transferred. It's been transferred by some holders of bad debt in Wall Street and transferred to the taxpayer, and now the Federal Reserve holds that. And this is a burden on the people and a burden on the economy. That's why unemployment is very high, and, and this is why people are losing their houses, because there's still a great debt burden, burden out there. It's very similar in many ways to what Japan went through. They didn't allow the liquidation of bad debt. You can't pretend that if we just give you this mor a moral promise, this moral hazard saying, no matter what, we're going to take care of you, just perpetuate all your mistakes, uh, then you'll get into a very, very dull, slow, uh, declining economy, and that's what we have. Why, why do you think that the tax cut extension could actually make the economy worse? Well, uh, the extension, you know, extending the tax breaks, which I'm going to vote for, but there's also some stuff in there like uh, spending. There's some spending right. in there, and uh, some people argue that it could push up the deficit, which they don't know for sure, because uh, uh, sometimes if you keep taxes down, you actually have, I think, I think if taxes went up, uh, people can't depend that that will raise revenues. Revenues yeah. may well not go up, so that's why it's, I say it's unpredictable. Predictable, but I take the position that we should do whatever we can to keep taxes as low as possible. So that puts me in the position of not allowing uh, these, these tax breaks to disappear. Yeah, well, we'll have to see because the spending part of the problem has yet to be addressed. Congressman, That's good right. to have you on the program. We so appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Congressman Iran Paul from Texas.